welcome to Research Talk. In this video, I am going to show another example, another demonstration of writing an analytic memo. And in this example, I have used a study and the phase of data analysis in this case is preliminary. So the researcher has already sort of collected most of the data and he has started doing his analysis. Uh, and, and so at that stage of coding process, he is uh, sharing his writing a memo, a research memo. So as you could see on the top, uh, the research topic this person is exploring is experiences of black women faculty in higher education. And the topic, uh, analytic memo, yes. And the initial phase of data analysis uh, that's when he wrote this uh, memo. Uh, the date on the top when this memo was written, name of the researcher, the person who wrote it. And so you start with the introduction. As you know, in introduction, you briefly talk about what you are going to share in this memo. So, so you could see this memo captures my reflections and preliminary analysis at an early stage of examining the collected data on the experiences of black women faculty in higher education. Through initial uh, coding initial interviews and reviewing academic literature, several key themes have begun to emerge. This stage of analysis is crucial for shaping the direction of our inquiry and refining our research questions. So as I said previously, this, is, uh, this analytic memo is written during the uh, uh, data analysis phase, and as this researcher is starting coding the data, some themes are have started emerging from the data. So this reflection is about those themes, those insights that this person, uh, this researcher is developing during that phase. So the first reflection he talks about is the complexity of identity and experience. And he says, the initial coding process has underscored the complexity of identity for black women faculty. Their narratives reveal how they, their professional experiences are deeply intertwined, uh, intertwined with their identities, encompassing not just race and gender, but also other factors like seniority, discipline, institutional types. Uh, and this is really important observation in the sense that now he's saying that as he's started collecting the data, now he can see that this intersectionality is, is complex in the sense that it has many factors, not only the gender and the race, because these women are black and women, but also how senior they are in their college or university, what discipline they are teaching. Are they teaching in arts and sciences versus engineering versus uh, other disciplines. And also institutional type, are they working at a public institutions or private institutions? Are they working at uh, a, a white majority uh, institution or a black majority institution? So all these different factors are intersecting when it comes to creating their experiences at these institutions. He further says, this complexity suggests a need for a multidimensional analytical approach that can adequately capture the nuanced ways in which different aspects of identity intersect and impact their experiences. So that's a very good observation uh, that this uh, researcher is making during the initial phase of coding the data and that's what he shares about it here, the complexity of identity and experience. Another experience and reflection that this researcher is sharing is uh, microaggressions and invisibility. So he says, a significant theme that has emerged from the data is the prevalence of microaggressions and feelings of invisibility. Participants describe frequent encounters with subtle, often dismissive, acts that undermine their authority, expertise, and presence in academic spaces. These experiences contribute to a sense of alienation and question 
the inclusive nature of higher education environment. Analyzing these narratives, it is apparent that microaggression serves as a pervasive barrier to the full inclusion and recognition of black women faculty. So this is another uh, observation, uh, this, uh, an insight this researcher has developed uh, through the initial phase of data analysis and he's sharing it here. Another observation he shares about the structural barriers to advancement and he says, the data analysis has also begun to reveal structural barriers that impede the career advancements of black women faculty. These barriers are not just interpersonal, but deeply embedded within the policies, practices, and cultures of academic institutions. Issues such as bias tenure and promotion processes, unequal workload distributions, and limited access to research funding have been highlighted. Understanding these structural barriers is essential for identifying potential areas for institutional change. Another important observation that this researcher is making. And he also shares another important observation and insight, which is strategies of navigation and resistance. So he says, despite these challenges, the narratives of black women faculty also highlight various strategies that employ they employ to navigate and resist the systemic barriers they face. These strategies include building supportive networks, engaging in mentorship, and advocating for institutional change. There is a resilience in their stories that speaks to the profound commitment to their uh, professional identities and to making higher education more equitable. So navigation strategies they are using to navigate these challenges and the resistance that they are showing. So these were four uh, observations, reflections this uh, researcher is sharing in this section. Now the next section he talks about, he's reflecting on methodological reflections here, you could see methodological reflections. So that's section two, where he talks about uh, his observations related to the process of uh, conducting this research. So the first reflection is about the importance of iterative analysis. And he says the initial phase of data analysis has reinforced the importance of an iterative approach to qualitative analysis. Returning to the data repeatedly allows for a deeper engagement with the complexities of the narratives and ensures that our analysis is grounded in the experiences of the participants. This iterative process is, a vital, is vital for uncovering the layers of meaning within the data. So as he is doing the data analysis, he's experiencing that, okay, he, he needs to uh, come back to the data and read the data, reread the data, engage with the data, uh, at multiple levels to understand the complexities of the narratives and understand the experiences of, of uh, participants. So uh, in summary, uh, this process is iterative in nature. Further, he talks about challenges of representation. That's another observation he is making related to the methodological uh, observations. So he says a methodological challenge that has emerged is ensuring that the analysis accurately represents the diversity of experiences among black women faculty. While there are common themes, there is also significant variation in how individuals experience and respond to racism and sexism. Balancing the identification of overarching themes with the acknowledgement of individual differences is crucial for the authentic representation of their experiences. Very important methodological observation he is making that yes, as a as a as a researcher, I am focusing on the emerging themes, what is, what is common across all the black women in terms of their experiences. However, he is also acknowledging that there are individual differences in terms of how black women respond to these experiences. And that also needs to be acknowledged and 
make sure that you, you talk about these when you write your article, when you, when you uh, present your findings. So yes, uh, finding the common themes is important, but not at the cost of uh, ignoring the individual differences. So that's another important methodological uh, observation this researcher is making. And finally, he talks about the next steps. So based on what he has observed, based on what he has shared, now what, how he's going to use that knowledge, that reflection, that understanding in the, next, in the, in the research process. So we have this next steps he talks about. He talks about expanding the analytical framework so incorporate additional theoretical perspectives that can enhance our understanding of the intersectionality of race, gender, and other aspects of identity. So he's uh, now considering other analytical, theoretical perspectives to incorporate in his data analysis. And then in-depth analysis of structural barriers. So he is now thinking about focus on detailed analysis of structural barriers identified, exploring their origins, manifestations, and impacts on black women faculty. So you see, when you start your research data collection, you have your set of questions that you use to, uh, to, to, to understand, to capture the experiences of your participant, but now, Based on your initial data analysis, you may want to re, you know, maybe tweak your questions. You may want to focus on certain aspect of the experience. And, and that's what he's saying that I'm going to focus on structural barriers even more and talk about the origin of those barriers, manifestations of those barriers, and impacts of those barriers on black women faculty. Uh, and next he talks about exploring resistance and agency further. So delve deeper into the strategies of navigation and resistance, understanding these um, not just as coping mechanism, but as a form of agency and empowerment. So some new ideas he's incorporating in his further data collection. Engaging with participant for validation. So he's saying consider sharing preliminary findings with some participants for their feedback ensuring the analysis aligns with their experiences and perspectives. As you know, in, in uh, we call it respondent uh, feedback. Uh, so what you do as you collect data, analyze the data, you may want to share your tentative initial findings with the participant to ensure that the interpretation that you are making, the anal analysis you are doing is the true representation of their experience. So that's what he is talking here to. And finally, he conclude this uh, section, this analytic memo. So that's how an analytic memo looks like uh, in a mid phase, or uh, you could say like when you start, you know, when you have almost done your data collection and you are start doing your, uh, data analysis, so that's how it looks like. So that's what I wanted to show you all an example of uh, analytic memo. I hope it helps you understand how to write your own analytic memo when you are conducting your research. If you have any questions, uh, you can put in the comments and I'll get back to you. Thank you very much. Have a good rest of the day and I'll see you soon.